Good morning, class. How are you all doing? Today, we are going to finish our lesson on post-war Philippines moving on to a new era. Are you excited? Do you still remember how many Philippine presidents have we talked about and how many Philippine presidents during to a new era have we discussed? Can you tell me the president that campaigned for a tie a yellow ribbon? Or how about the president who served under the Japanese state government? Or maybe the one who is the non-Catholic or Protestant only president of the Philippines and the one who ruled the Philippines for 21 years. In June 1998, President Ramos Vice President Joseph Arab Estrada won the presidential elections and he became the 13th president of the Philippines. Era para sa mahirap is his popular slogan. He promised the Filipino people, especially the poor, that he would implement pro-poor policies and programs. One of it is to have as many Filipino children to go to school. But his government's approach was to encourage the private sector to construct more classrooms and the local governments to buy more textbooks. Projects were also launched for better health services for the youth, women, veterans, and indigenous communities. However, before he ended his term, he was convicted guilty of plunder case, and he is the first president who was literally impeached. On January 20, 2001, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo was sworn in as the 14th President of the Philippine Republic by Chief Justice David Jr. after the Supreme Court unanimously declared the position of President vacant. GMA is the daughter of ex-president Justado Macapagal. She is the second female president of the country and she gained higher economic growth than the past three presidents before her. The ex-president of the United States, Bill Clinton, cited Gloria's tough decisions because of her brilliant strategy to make the country's economy back in shape amidst the 2008 global financial crisis. As a great economist, one of his accomplishments is that the peso became the best performing currency of the year in Asia in 2007 and the EVAT law was implemented during her reign as Philippine president. Benigno Aquino III declared the undisputed winner of the 2010 elections. He became the 15th president of the Philippine Republic. The May 2010 elections will be remembered as the first fully automated elections in the Philippine history when voters cast their votes by marking a paper ballot and then feeding their completed ballot paper into an automated election machine that reads the voting choice automatically. This means there is no need for people to count the votes. Aquino III, popularly known as Pinoy, he popularized the no wang wang policy, the ban of the unauthorized use of blaring sirens, showed that the government was serious in cracking down an attitude of entitlement among corrupt officials. And during his administration, it is where the K-12 education was born in the country. Do you know who is in the picture? He is Rodrigo Duterte, the 16th president of the Philippines from 2016 until the present. He was elected to a six-year term in May 2016. He is known by the nickname Digong. And... He aligned the country with Asian values instead of Hollywood manufactured cultural norms. Fight Against Drugs was the first project of the Duterte administration. 
He also focused on uplifting the status of indigenous peoples and of our Muslim brothers in the South. And in his time, he is securing fishing privileges for Filipinos in waters that China has been claiming as its own. What do you think is going to happen in the next two years of his administration? Here is the list of the 16 Philippine presidents of the Philippines. Please memorize their names from the first president until the 16th president. Today, we learned about the Philippine president since the post-war era and independence. Did you learn something today? I hope you do. If ever you have questions, feel free to message me or leave a comment on the comment section below. Thank you so much, Grade 4, and God bless you.